Hi, everyone. This is Sandy. This is Untame Your Soul and Unleash Unlimited Abundance. And I am here with you today to talk about something that just kind of popped up on my radar. Um, regret. <laughs> I kind of have a funny story to tell you. Um, first of all, we had a cell phone issue the other day. I don't know how many of you guys are with Verizon, um, but we are, and it was time for an upgrade. So we went to upgrade and um, basically we um, should have had the phone shipped to our house because I did the upgrades online. However, I was impatient and I said, well, we'll go pick them up at the store. And they checked the inventory. Sure enough, the phones we wanted were at this store. We went down that night. Phones weren't there. One of them was, one of them wasn't. Um, there was a huge mix, mix up and basically it became our problem to fix it, which really, really irritated me. Um, customer service was ridiculous. Um, didn't even try to go and contact um, anyone to try to help us. So um, went home fuming, went back online onto the chat where I ordered the phones and you know, got through there. Um, the guy didn't understand what I was saying, said it poss couldn't possibly have been a mistake. My phone was there and that we should have to rectify it with the store. I'm like, uh, no, that's not happening. So long story short, online with customer service, um, a different person on the phone talking to a human. Um, Reggie from Chicago, if you're ever with Verizon and you need to talk to somebody human who understands, it's Reggie from Chicago. Um, he's wonderful. And he tried his best, but we're still going to have to cancel the order and redo it. Well, he's still waiting for the order to be canceled through the warehouse. This is two days later. I would have had my phone by now if I was patient. Um, moral of the story is um, regrets. I regret not having them shipped to us. But I also look at that whole cell phone moment as a huge wake up call because, you know, people are so attached to their phones, right? Um, we use them for everything. You know, it's a big part of my my business and it's a big part of being in touch with you guys. And, um, you know, we use it for distractions. We use it for fun. We use it for work. It's everything. And I think we've become so technology obsessed that we lose track of the real important things. Because I'll tell you what, the customer service that I received in person at the Verizon store was subpar, sub subpar. Like I would have been fired if I talked to anybody like that back in the day when I started working. Um, but we've we've lost touch with what matters most. And a lot of people don't allow themselves to be in the moment. You know, the mindfulness stuff we talk about. Um, being in the moment is a really important thing because then you are present, fully present. You know, you're using all five of your senses fully right there in front of a person. You can hear them. You know, you're aware of your surroundings. You can, you know, see what's going on. Maybe if you're having dinner, you know, you're using smell and taste, um, touch, you know, how things feel. To be present in a moment is scary because we're really not used to it. And people run because of fear. People try to escape the present moment by pulling themselves in another direction, by constantly looking somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else because they're afraid to face what's right there in front of them. Um, so we're losing touch with what matters most. And, you know, another thing that we seem to do really well, um, hey Thane, I'm going back and forth between my notes and this. So if you guys pop on, you have questions, say hi, give me a thumbs up, something. Um, appreciate you joining me. So I was thinking that, you know, putting others' priorities before our own has become a huge thing in our society because we're taught to do that. We're taught to um, please other people. I mean, how many of you are people pleasers out there? Give me a heart, you know, a thumbs up, you know, something. Um, an angry face if it makes you mad. Um, I was big time. You know, I still struggle with that a little bit on the parental side. Um, people pleasing. You know, it's a really destructive thing that can happen to, to us because we end up living life for other people and not for ourselves. And oh, are we good at, at guilt tripping ourselves, right? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, if I follow my own path, then I'm going to let somebody down. Or if I want to do what I want to do, then they're going to be disappointed in me. You know, it's this whole cycle of conversation that keeps happening and going over and over and over in our minds. Um, 
And basically, it leads to guilt. You know, we're really, really feeling the weight of a lot of guilt from not only ourselves, but from our parents, from our grandparents, because the energy gets passed down generationally. And you can look back, you know, through your ancestry and where it's like, okay, hey, here, I'm done with it. Here's your big bag of guilt. Carry on. Um, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until we're feeling crushed. And then we do things to try to deal with that guilt. We do things like um, substance abuse. We do things like lash out at people like anger. Um, Sorry, my puppy came up to say hi. Um, like anger and frustration. And we do mental abuse, physical abuse, um, you know, emotional abuse. Sometimes we cheat on our significant others. Sometimes we stay absolutely miserable in a relationship or a job that we absolutely hate, but we reach out to find something to numb that, gu that guilt and that fear that comes about because we're not being true to our sole purpose. So, Throw some likes up if, if it's resonating with anybody. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a serious topic. So, you know, that guilt that you feel for wanting to follow your own path, for thinking that you're going to let other people down, um, for doing something that you absolutely hate, that crushes your soul. Um, why? Why? You know, that was a big aha moment for me. Um, when I quit teaching, this is, this is beautiful, my very last day, I cleaned out my classroom. Um, I went across the hallway to tell another one of the English teachers that I was leaving, and she had already heard through the grapevine, because, you know, gossiping is what humans do best. Um, and she looked at me, she was sitting on the floor, and she looked up at me, and she had this pure look of disgust on her face. And she said, how could you do that to the students and the parents? You're so selfish. I'm sorry, what? Um, I didn't think that they were in charge of my life. So, yeah, I, I didn't do this. I said, you know, I, I, I didn't do this for the students and the parents. I did this for me. This is for my soul. This is for, for what my soul needs. And I listened. And if society had trained her to be judgmental, to be accusatory, um, to make it seem like I was, making a massive mistake. I wasn't. I was doing the best thing I could possibly do, which was for me to be true to my soul's purpose. I wasn't going to let myself become sick anymore from a job that crushed me. I wasn't going to let myself be constantly aggravated and, you know, let it affect other people in my life because of things I couldn't control. You know what I can control? Me and what I do. So, that's what I did. I stepped out. Um, it was scary because when I left my classroom for the last time, I sobbed like soul wrenching, body shaking sobs. And my, my daughter was with me and, you know, she's like, mom, what are you, why are you crying? And, and, you know, it was, it was a death of a part of me. You know, it was something that I, it was a part of me for so long, but I am so sorry. Um, Pepper, go lay down. Go, lay down. So she only wants attention when I'm doing something. Um, so it was such a big part of me that, you know, my ego popped up a couple of times and was like, hey, do you really want to do this? Hey, are you really glad you quit? Hey, are you sure you really wanted to do that? You know, yeah, I really am. Because my soul has learned how to shut my ego up. Um, ego is society. Ego is what we've been taught to think, um, taught to do, taught to feel, you know, when you get in touch with yourself and what you really are supposed to be doing, then that's, that's what you're supposed to think, feel and do. Um, so, you know, it's not without its sadness to change is to experience fear and fear is a good thing. You know, if, if we didn't have that natural reaction to fear, then we could get ourselves into, you know, certain situations that we may not want to be in. But when people tell us that we need to fear our own choices that we know deep down inside are the best choices for us and for our soul, that's when you start needing to question things. That's when you start need, you need to look inside. You need to reevaluate where you are 
and what this other person is trying to do. Because honestly, people just want things from other people. How many people do you come across on a daily basis who is simply selfless and doing something just for the betterment of humanity? You know, we're not all Mother Teresa's. Um, so it's, it's a very different world when you take a step outside of that zone and you start doing something for yourself um, and stop trying to please other people and stop worrying about what other people think. So while everybody out here who's waking up, and I know you wouldn't be here if you weren't, um, if you've become spiritually aware, you know, part of the, the theme I'm hearing is, you know, well, I don't know how to tell my significant other. I don't know how to tell my son. I don't know how to tell my parents because they're really devout, you know, religious people. There's that fear. You know, they've been programmed to be, you've stepped outside of the situation and you can see further, bigger. This does not make you a bad person. This does not make you an alien um, in our world. You know, they're waking up teachers. You're here because you're a teacher. You know, this is the time that you need to start learning and honing your craft and your soul's purpose on why you're really here. Um, I know I'm really impassioned about this. Um, it, it's, it's everything. And, you know, here's another story. Um, you know, after I, I finished sobbing and after my, you know, when I left my classroom and after my ego was like, hey, tap, 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 you know, um, excuse me, don't you think you should go back and do that? Um, no. <laughs> Are you glad you quit? Yes. A hundred times yes. A million times yes. Because I followed my soul's path. And sometimes, and you know what? I wasn't 100% sure what that was when I quit. And that was really scary. But you know what? Another thing, the universe has my back and I have not fallen because that's what happens when you step into your true purpose. The universe has your back. Source, <laughs> spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, has your back and will not let you fall. Okay? Um, for example, you know, my daughter, she's nine. She's petrified of birds. Um, not the kind like outside in the woods, but parrots, um, cockatiels, you know, macaws, the, the pet kind. Um, so while we were at the mall the other night dealing with this Verizon stuff, we had to wait a little bit. So we had decided to walk around and there was a how there was a old store that had been turned into this huge bird rescue facility. I mean, massive. There probably were hundreds of birds in there. Um, so the birds weren't all in their cages. Um, some of them were out up on top of their cages perching. Some of them were on perches. Some of them people were handling. Um, but it was super, super loud in there. And my daughter is petrified of birds. So she comes in and she immediately clams up. And she's like, Mom. And she's pulling on me. And she's like, let's go. Get out. I'm getting out of here. Come on. Let's go. And she knows she's not allowed to go anywhere without us in public. So, you know, she's freaking out. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're not done in here, honey. It's, it's good. It's fine. And trying to calm her down, you know, do the parent thing. She's feeling a lot of fear. And I'm like, she's pulling me. And let's go, let's go, let's go. It goes out of the door. And I'm, I look at her like, uh -uh, get back here. She gets back in. And I said, we are not leaving until we're finished. And I said, well, I want to ask this person a question. So she's standing there and she's all in her fear. And she starts crying. Right? Breaking my mama heart. But I know I have to let her hear because I can't reinforce that fear by taking her out. So she's standing there and she's crying. It doesn't go into a full out sob. She stops crying. She's standing there, patiently waiting. We're finished. We walk out. Nothing happened to her. You know, a rogue bird didn't come and attack her. She didn't get carried off by several thousand pairs of wings. Um, you know, she left the rescue. And she walked a bit taller because she conquered a fear. And that's what it feels like when we conquer a fear because we walk a bit taller, you know? Um, and let's see. And, and change is like that. You know, fear is like that. Fear is a natural part of change. Um, you can stay where it's comfortable for you. We all can super comfy, comfy there. You know, that's why we stay, call it a comfort zone because it's comfortable. We love it there. Um, but change doesn't happen unless you step outside of that comfort zone. And what's outside of that comfort zone? Fear, right? 
but fear doesn't hurt you. Fear doesn't hurt you. Fear doesn't hurt you. And source has your back. So step out of your comfort zone. Take a look at your soul purpose. Take a look at what you're really here to do. You feel it. Maybe some of you dream it. Maybe it's this nagging pull. Maybe you're researching the heck out of stuff. However, it's showing up for you. Embrace it and explore it. A lot of people ask for signs. You know, hey, can you show me a sign if this is what I'm supposed to do? Um, yeah, here. And then the sign's not good enough. Or we're like, oh, no, 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 not that sign. No, I didn't want that sign. I want another sign. You know, um, you ask and the universe provides. Simple as that. You know, it's called manifestation. It's called abundance. We have it. We have unlimited abundance. We just put the limitations on it ourselves. We put the limitations on it ourselves. So you're limiting yourself when you're not stepping out and going after what you want. You're limiting yourself when you're allowing another person's expectations of you to control your life. You're limiting yourself when you stay inside your comfort zone and you don't step out because of fear and change. Fear is not a bad thing. Fear boosts you to your next level where things are freaking amazing. So talking to some people, I, I, I talked about what people regret at the beginning of this. And if you think about it, when people are on their deathbeds, you know, in hospice or in the hospital or, or when people lose someone, you know, I'm talking about death, finality, no longer on this earth plane. Um, they start bringing up everything they regret. Oh, I should have. I could have. I would have. If only. Is that why we're here? Is that our purpose on this earth is to accumulate a massive pile of woulda, coulda, shouldas? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. In fact, I know it's not because of that. So step out of that comfort zone. Be present in the moment. Do something for yourself to actually embrace your soul and your soul's purpose. And feel that spark, that, that phenomenal life force that's within you that is going to... Okay. Sorry, school bus. My son's home. Um, feel that phenomenal life force in you. You know, that one that's going to drive you through the rest of your life, making the positive changes that you're supposed to be making in this world. You know what that is. Everybody has a different path, but everybody's connected with their own spirit and with source. And even if you don't know what that path is, you can still take steps toward it. So, um, what do you regret? If today was your last day on earth, what do you regret? Now do it. That thing you regretted, do it. Write yourself a note. Take a step toward it. No matter how big it is, no matter how impossible it seems, if you want it, you do it because you can and the universe has your back so I would really love to talk with you um, sign up for an appointment with me I'll post the link up at the top of this video when I repost it um, I'd love 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 to talk with you about how I can help you get in touch with your soul find out your soul's purpose find out what's holding you back find out really how to claim your personal power create the life you want with passion, clarity, and purpose. Because that's my mission. That's my sole purpose. All right. No regrets. Love you.